What inspires Carol Rose Golden Eagle? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to this week's episode of Crystal's All About Books. So book lovers, please stop and hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with my latest author interviews. And this week, I am so honored to have Carol Rose Golden Eagle with us. Carol is Cree and Dene with roots in Sandy Bay, Saskatchewan. She is an award-winning author, poet, short story writer, playwright, visual artist, musician, and was a journalist for over 30 years. We'll be talking about her novel, The Narrows of Fear, which was published by Anana Publication. And it's a wonderful book that weaves the story of some Aboriginal women. We have an elder, Nina, Charlene, and Sandy, and they really come together to heal themselves, but also Mary Ann. Welcome to All About Books. I am so delighted you asked me here today, Crystal. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so Carol Rose, over the course of your life, you've had four surnames. And over a year ago, you began using what you consider to be your proper name, Golden Eagle. Can you please share the significance of having a surname that matches your identity? Exactly. Um, so I'm sure many are familiar with the uh, a concept of having a spiritual or traditional name within Indigenous culture in Canada and I'm sure other cultures throughout the world. And I did not grow up in my Indigenous culture. I was one of those kids in the 1960s who the government just grabbed me from my mother the moment I was born and put me into the foster care system. And uh, anyway, so I I did not grow up knowing our indigenous and spiritual traditions. However, obviously I have learned much <laughs> over the past few decades. Um, so a while back, I wanted to have a spiritual name. So I, I gave some tobacco and I asked an elder if uh, he would consider, you know, finding out what my name is. Because according to what I've been told, we have this name all of our lives. The moment we're born, we have a name that will guide us. And my name is Osala Mikatu Esquale, which in our culture, everyone would have had a name, something like that. Translated loosely, it means golden eagle. Mm -hmm. And so that name had a lot of significance for me in terms of connecting with my culture, but also because I didn't want to carry the name I was born with, which was Morin. I was, um, it's not a traditional name. I'm guessing some Indian agent or a priest or, or someone like that couldn't pronounce the traditional names and gave them, the family, our ancestors, a name that they could uh, pronounce. Then I was adopted legally when I was 10 and given the name Adams. And uh, foolishly, I got married and, and took the name Daniels, which I'm divorced now and I don't wanna carry that name around anymore. And I really have a goal of having at least 20 titles on market by the time I'm 65. And I'm thinking I'm just getting started now. I have five titles and I don't want to carry uh, my ex-husband's name into my future as an author. So I gave a lot of thought to it and I thought, yeah, I'm going to use the translated version of my spiritual name, which is Golden Eagle. And it, I love it. It, it's such a, a beautiful sounding word and it has a lot of meaning to me and I think in a lot of ways that name guides me when I do write. Yeah. Oh, it's incredible and I can't imagine for you when these books arrived at your doorstep and there is your name on the book like it must have been quite an incredible moment for you. I think it's incredible for any author when their book finally arrives and you can open it and flip the pages and, and say, I 
wrote this? <laughs> How did I do that? But uh, I really, I, I enjoy all forms of writing, um, but I really like writing novels and, and I love fiction. And I can't help but think the reason I'm so attracted to writing and reading fiction is because I spent so many years, 32 years, working as a journalist with um, CBC, CTV, APPN, mm -hmm. several radio stations all across Canada. And of course, when you're a journalist, you must stick to the facts. And so being able to write fiction, you can do anything. And uh, I think that's the reason that I love doing it. So it is, uh, it's wonderful me for me to be able to say, yeah, I have uh, five of these now <laughs> on the market <laughs> and um, five titles. And I will be releasing another manuscript of poetry in 2021. Inanna Publications again will be publishing. And I, I love what I've done with that. Um, I have three children. They are the joys mm -hmm. and the loves of my life. Yeah. And we've done so much as a family. Um, their childhood, I totally committed myself to, you know, I was a single parent and I had a full-time job as an anchor at CBC North and we lived in Yellowknife. And all I did was I'd go to work and then the rest of my time and all of my efforts and attention was always on my kids. And uh, so we have all sorts of wonderful memories of their childhood living in the bush in Northern Canada. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna write a series of poems, which is kind of like love letters to my kids. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them tell stories. Some of them are just uh, pieces of my heart where I thank creator for mm -hmm. bringing them into my life. <clears throat> Excuse me, into my life. And um, anyway, so I look forward to that being out next year. And mm -hmm. I am working on another poetry manuscript as well as another novel manuscript. And I kind of hope I'm done both of them by the end of 2021, but we'll see what happens. Okay, well, we'll look forward to them when they come out. <laughs> now, um, your novel, The Narrows of Fear, it is a powerful novel. It's an important novel because you're dealing with the trauma of intergenerational violence within the community but also the abuse suffered at the residential schools. And as a reader, what really shone through for me was the collective power of the Aboriginal women and also the healing that comes with um, reclaiming your culture. Um, can you discuss how the novel celebrates women and the role they play in claiming, reclaiming the Indigenous culture? All right, so as I had mentioned earlier, I did not grow up within my Indigenous culture because I was scooped up like yes. tens of thousands of people, babies mm -hmm. in the 1960s. And when I did reconnect and when I finally found my bi biological family, I was already in my 30s. Mm -hmm. And um, I started needing, I started taking Cree language training then as well. And uh, I started meeting all of these amazing women who became my teachers in a lot of respects in terms of, uh, you know, guiding me to drumming and singing, dancing mm -hmm. and powwows, going to other uh, spiritual ceremonies and just learning as much as I can about the culture. And I've met so many amazing elders, male and female, who have been so generous with um, sharing their knowledge and keeping the culture strong and alive and moving forward in that way. And uh, I really, I really wanted to, I guess with this novel, say thank you to all of those beautiful, beautiful people who've mm. been a part of my life and, and have uh, shared with me stories and uh, food and, and just knowledge. So I'm thankful for that. Yeah. When you were putting your novel together, Kale Rose, um, which one of the women came to you first as a, as a, a voice through, for one of your characters? All right. So my first novel, which was released in 2015, Bear Skin Diary, mm -hmm. which won a, a National Aboriginal Literary Award, um, it focuses on the character of Sandy. Yes. And it's her story trying to find her way back to the culture. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And a lot of people said, is it an autobiography? And it's like, no, it's not. But it is my first novel. And every uh, writing class I took when, early on, um, when I started to write, everybody would say, write what you know. And so, yeah. so that's what I wanted to write about is uh, the 1960s scoop up and how difficult it was for this character, Sandy, to navigate through. Um, she's a journalist and, and uh, faces the water racism. And in, in the novel, there's a scene where she meets her biological family for the first time. Yes. But that's not the storyline of the novel. And so it's a scene only. And obviously she, she's just so happy to have finally reconnected. And I had a lot of readers saying, you know, I really want to know more about her family. I want to know more about where she came from. I want to know how the characters and her family interact together and what's important to them. And so in a way, uh, Narrows of Fear is kind of like a sequel because Sandy also prominent, prominently figures in this novel. But you don't, you don't have to know the storyline of Bear Skin Diary to, to follow Sandy. Um, so that's how it started was I wanted to continue with Sandy reconnecting with her family. And, uh, and then we meet all of the other um, characters along the way, including our horrible, horrible antagonist, John Wayne. And uh, as a writer, if you're going to be including an antagonist, make him rotten. <laughs> so I did. Yeah. But you'll have to read the book to know. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, you know, actually, um, Carol's that that's one of one of the questions I had for you. I mean, we've got John Wayne, who is a victim. He's a violent abuser and he's a predator. And certainly for you as a writer, you know, when you're at your desk that day and you're working away, how did you leave John Wayne at your desk and not carry the heaviness of him with you? Okay. I don't have her with me <clears throat> right now, but I have a dog. <laughs> and yeah. uh, maybe she'll show up. My son just took her for a walk. That's what I do. When I need to let go of, of whatever is uh, a bit of a burden, including the character of John Wayne, I go for a walk. I live, um, I live about a half an hour out of the city of Regina in a little town called Regina Beach, which is mm -hmm. right on Last Mountain Lake. And so we walk by the lake every day, two or three times a day in the summer or when the weather is really lovely. We're outside for hours and hours. And uh, that is really good medicine for me in every possible way. So that's how I, that's how I get my ideas. Mm -hmm. But it's also how I sort of decompress from heavy situations. And, and there are some, several yes. of them in the novel with respect to that antagonist of John Wayne. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you, you, on, on the flip side, you also have some great men in your novel. In particular, I just adored Gabriel and Menard. Did I pronounce that correctly? Menard? Maynard. Maynard. Um, yeah. They have a really beautiful relationship. Can you discuss the role of their relationship in the novel? I loved Uncle Gabriel as well. And again, I have people like that in my life. They're part of my mm -hmm. family um, mm -hmm. up in northern Saskatchewan. And uh, oh my Lord, because I live in the South, when I go up there, it's like a whole different world. Um, everyone is speaking free. People are so adept at going out on the land and uh, you know, knowing how to be safe because there are bears and cougars and wolves and all sorts of things up there. But uh, they take me with them and they talk about plants and they talk about what plants can do, you know, certain things can, uh, let's say if you have a headache or you have a cold or uh, mm -hmm. you have a tummy ache and everything you need is on the land. And I'm so blessed that my kokum, my grandmother, who I never met, but stories that I've been told by my sister, she would constantly go out and, and harvest the land. And so they still do that. And uh, of course, fishing and hunting. And so I go up north and, and there's always 
wild meats and, and fish right from the lake. And I don't even remember your question, but I really, really love my culture. And I love yes. the Northern culture. And uh, I'm just really blessed that I, I have been able to reconnect with my roots because uh, yeah. I know it's not like that with, with all, all reunifications of uh, <clears throat> children who have been in care or scooped up or went to residential school and, and try to come back and, and reconnect. It's not always a, a good story, but I've been fortunate enough that uh, my story has been something beautiful. And I like to share that. And yeah. I like to share how strong our women are in, yeah. in our culture. It doesn't matter where they live. Mm -hmm. And our women are, are uh, the community builders. They are the, the backbone of families. And uh, more and more, finally moving into areas of, of professional, uh, don't know what you want to call it, professions. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I wanted to also write Narrows of Fear to say, you know what, our women are so awesome yes. that our women, my culture, we need, to, we need to be more cohesive. We need to work together to move forward as a culture and find more harmony within our communities, but also with uh, the larger population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with your women in the, in the novel, when you were writing, did you find they were speaking to you a lot, Carol Rose? I did. I did. In fact, somebody asked me about my process when I'm nice. writing. And when I am writing a novel, um, I, may go, I may go months and not write anything other than notes because I take notes all the time. But mm -hmm. uh, thanks to arts organizations like the Canada Council, like the Saskatchewan Arts Board or SAS Culture, I've been uh, fortunate enough to have received grants which allow me to not have to worry about having to spend my time working, doing other contracts, because yeah. when you're an artist, you can't really have a regular full-time job. So I, I do a lot of stuff uh, with contracts, and I'll, I'll do short periods of work, but, but I have to work, because um, the reality is it's very difficult to make an actual living as an author. Um, that's not why I got into it. So when I am doing, I, I happen to get a, a Canada Council grant, it allows me to not have to worry about my bills, and it allows me the time to spend with the story, with the characters. And uh, what happens there is I'm thinking about them all the time. Other than walking my dog, I'm at my writing desk all the time. And in fact, my neighbors worry about me <laughs> when I'm writing this thing. They don't see me for, for yeah. long periods of time, like weeks when I'm writing the first draft. And what happens with the inspiration, because I immerse myself so fully in, in the writing and stories and how things are moving forward in terms of the storyline, I dream when I go to bed uh -huh. and, and I go to sleep, I will dream of the characters and I'll dream of dialogue and I'll think of uh, locations and details. Where are they now? What does it smell like? What does the wind sound like? That sort of stuff. Yeah. So a lot of things happen while I'm sleeping. Then I get up and uh, write it all down because experience has taught me that if you, even though you might be a little tired, yeah. um, if you wake up at four in the morning or something, get up as a writer because you're going to forget <laughs> If you don't write it down, whether it's, um, you know, writing it by hand or with a notebook by your bedside <clears throat> or getting up like I do and, and turning on your computer and putting down everything that, that you just thought about. So that's part of my purpose. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, you have so many creative outlets you, between your visual arts and your writing. Um, what would be your favorite creative outlet all of, out of all of them? Or is there a time and place for them, for each one, I should say? Yeah, there kind of is. I, I love writing. I love storytelling. I've mm -hmm. been um, 
I've been telling stories since I was a, my earliest memory, I was maybe four. And I remember making up stories <laughs> when I was four years old. And um, so I do love storytelling and the creativity that writing allows because you can create any type of world or any type of emotion when you're writing. Um, but I, I also really love to sing with my drum and particularly mm -hmm. if I'm singing with other women because we harmonize and we sound awesome. And I, I love bold color, bold strokes of mm -hmm. painting. And I, it's hard to say, you know, it's hard to say I have a favorite, but if I had to, it would be Ray. Yeah. yeah. Well, Carol Rose, I would like to say a great big thank you today for coming on my program, All About Books, Miigwech, because I think it is such an important novel. It helps you understand the way, like the girl power, what women can do when they come together. And also for people who don't understand the repercussions of colonialism, it's, it, it's just such an important read to understand the impact that colonialism has had on the Indigenous people. So I thank you for that wisdom. And what I'll do is I'll put links down below in the description box. So uh, if our watchers would like more information about Carol Rose, or you'd like to purchase a copy of this incredible book, the narrows of fear. All the information will be there. So thank you everyone for joining us today.